If you want to up your racing photography to get photos like this, here's your golden ticket. My name is John of RatchetStrapMedia.com and welcome back to another video. If you are new here, consider subscribing and hitting that bell to get instant notifications when I upload new content. There are many different scenarios in racing photography, which means there are many different pieces of gear you will need. You're going to need a camera body. Pretty much anything will do, but if you really want your photos to shine, then you will need a faster camera. This is a Canon EOS R6. It shoots 12 frames per second with the mechanical shutter, allowing you to capture a ton of photos in a single burst. You don't need this fast of a camera. I started out on a Canon T6i and got fantastic results. You can accomplish this with pretty much any interchangeable lens camera. Next, you will need lenses. You want something wide, something of a medium range, and then an optional super long range. Most of the time, you won't be able to get right up on the action for safety reasons, so this is where your telephoto lenses come in handy. The lenses I personally use for racing are a 7200 and a 150 to 600. These two lenses get me pretty much any focal length I will ever need. My Tamron 7200 2.8 is my most used lens. It's decently light, has a very useful range, and is tack sharp. My other lens I use on occasion is the Sigma 150 to 600. This lens allows me to punch right in on the action to make it look like I am right next to the vehicles. You don't need to spend money on these exact lenses, but your glass is way more important than your camera body. You will also want to pick up various accessories like a good stable tripod, a monopod, various ND filters, or a variable ND filter just to name a few. Here are some basic settings to get you started. You should be setting your camera to manual mode and setting your camera to capture raw photos. You can do stills photography or panning photography, which both will have different settings. For stills where you will be sitting in one place, you should set the camera correctly to capture the motion of your subject. Depending on the lighting situation, my go-to setting is a shutter speed of 1 100th of a second, aperture of f9 to f11, and I like to keep my ISO at 100 if I can, but this is what you can use to adjust your exposure to make sure that it is correct. Auto ISO does a decent job most of the time. Just make sure you are shooting raw so you can you know, recover your shadows and highlights if you didn't nail the exposure the first time. For panning shots, I set the camera a little different. My shutter speed will be 1 30th of a second, aperture of f5.6 to f9, depending on how far you are away from the vehicle, and ISO of 100. But again, auto ISO can work wonders. You will need an ND filter of some kind for your lens because these settings will make your photos very overexposed. My go-to is an ND8 filter on very sunny days, but you may need more or less depending on your specific location and time of day. These settings will introduce motion into your shots by having a slow shutter speed. If you run a faster shutter speed, you will have many more successful photos, but it will freeze the action, making it look like the vehicles are parked on the track. Another reason why I run slow shutter speeds while panning instead of, say, 2.8 or something way more wide open is because when you pan and focus on the car, the car will be in focus, but the background will have a bunch of motion blur, allowing the vehicle to stand out. There's no need for a wide open aperture. Panning with the vehicle while having a slow shutter speed will give you background blur similar to a bokeh. You want the entire car in focus, so having a smaller aperture will allow you to accomplish this. For stills photos, you would simply find a good angle and snap the cars as they come into your desired shooting location. Still shots are an easy way to get into racing photography and learn the basics. I suggest you start there and work your way up to some of the harder techniques. Panning photography is the next style you can learn. This will take a lot of practice to get down and be prepared to have a ton of really bad and unusable shots. Don't get bummed, just keep practicing and you will learn. The key to panning is to be as stable and precise as possible. Plant your feet, bring your camera to your face, using your face as a point of contact, and lock your arms. Your best bet is to stand towards the way you will end your shot sequence using only your hips to rotate. Keep your feet firmly planted and your legs locked. Combining all of these together will make you like a human tripod, allowing you to follow the car as stable as possible. Another way you can pan is by using a tripod or a monopod. You will still have to do the previous steps of stabilizing your body, but you will have the added help of your tripod or monopod. Using either of them is a good way to learn the panning style, especially if you have a big heavy lens. My last style is the in-car rolling shots. Be extremely careful when doing this. You can be seriously injured or your equipment can get damaged. For rolling shots, you will be seated in the passenger seat of a car and more than likely strapped in with harnesses. That means you're not going to be able to see what you're shooting. 
My method is to set my aperture to the speed I think we will be moving and adjust from there. So if you're doing 60 miles per hour, set to 1 60th of a second, 40 miles per hour, set to 1 40th of a second, and so on. You also want to set your lenses to manual and set them to infinity focus if it has the option to. For this, you're going to want a wide lens. I use my Canon 16 to 35 f 2.8. You're also going to want a strap for insurance in case you drop your camera while you're in the car. It's pretty simple. Stick your arm out the window and hold down the shutter button. You're pretty much just spraying and praying at this point. You may not get any usable shots, but if you do and it was done right, you will get an epic burst of photos. If you want to see how I edit these photos after the fact, comment down below. That's all I have for today's video. Consider subscribing and liking for more content just like this. As usual, my name is John of RatchetStrapMedia.com. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.